Okay. Hey, peace. What's going on? This is a video for the blog Today's Transcendence at DoTheKnowledge.com. And I'm here with my brother Hondo Solomon, uh, what, who I consider my nutritional consultant and uh, just a very wise brother. Um, essentially, he's what they call a fruitarian. Now, I've been a vegetarian slash vegan for about five years, which I'm sure you guys know what that is. A vegetarian doesn't eat animal, animal flesh. Vegan doesn't eat uh, animal products such as milk cheese. Then a step beyond that is raw foodism, people who don't eat cooked foods at all. And then a step beyond that is fruitarianism. Now this uh, video is specifically for a uh, mini-series I'm doing called uh, Lifestyles of the Common Focus, basically talking about different things you can do to stay in a relaxed state of awareness and be at your optimal state of like focus. So um, what we're going to talk about today now is uh, that applied specifically to nutrition. Um, I have a couple of joints here. This is African Holistic Health, which is what encouraged me to be a vegetarian in the first place. This is uh, When Food is Love. I just got this from the library. Exploring the relationship between eating and intimacy, which is kind of cool because she breaks down how what a lot of us are doing at this point in time is using food to medicate other emotional issues such as anxiety, uh, what's the word? Anger. Anger, lack of love, etc. Um, and he's putting me onto a couple of new joints that I, I'm going to need to just <coughs> confiscate from you before you leave. Uh, your Body Never Lies, the complete book of oriental diagnosis, because you study Chinese medicine as well, right? Correct. And, and that actually covers something called physiognomy, which is reading the body, reading the bodily patterns mm -hmm. to determine uh, locations and depth of disease of okay. the organs in the body. Okay, cool. Uh, the Subtle Body and Encyclopedia of Your Energetic Anatomy by Cindy Dale. And lastly, uh, the Book of the Chakras, Discovering the Hidden Forces Within You, which is, of course, uh, Eastern philosophy kind of related stuff. So that's some recommended scrolls. Why don't you just go ahead and set it? As far as uh, staying relaxed, staying calm, and staying focused and powerful, what do you think some people should do to uh, introduce into their diet? Uh, well, first of all, um, first thing really is it, so much more than just food, but the, the diet, mm -hmm. you definitely want to get off animal products. Uh, okay. Because things like animal flesh uh -huh. have the hormones of the animal in it. Right. And generally, uh, this will interact with the hormones in your body and cause everything to shift. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you look into ancient history, uh, the most violent cultures on the planet were heavy meat eaters. In fact, some would actually eat meat right before they went off to, went battle, off the battle in order to hype themselves up. So uh, you have a lot of, uh, especially our people, uh, all over the radio, mm -hmm. uh, even in, in personal interaction, uh, right. they'll talk about they're warriors, so they need to eat a warrior's diet. Mm -hmm. But they assume that in order to be a warrior, uh, you have to eat animal flesh. Right. But one part of being a warrior is not to be rough and tough, it's also to have mental focus, right. spiritual focus, okay. and clarity. Okay. But they miss that aspect. Um, when you look at uh, the ancient cultures of the world uh, who had warrior cultures such as the samurai, mm -hmm. and the Japanese, uh, you had even the ninja of, of Japan as well. Uh, they they focus on their spirituality. Okay. And when you're eating uh, eating dead animal flesh, right. something which was killed, you take on that spirit. Right. So then I you follow. jump into Native American cultures who, before they would even kill a creature, they would actually pray to the Creator or pray to right. the spirit right. of the right. animal or worship the before they take it. Right. You to see? balance that energy. Right. To balance that energy, and then it's not is they wanted to pray and give reverence to the Creator because. They weren't just taking this thing frivolously, right. taking life frivolously. It was to feed, feed themselves okay. if these things were available. Cool. So now, aside from uh, the history and sort of the energetic kind of science behind it, what are some uh, specific, let's say, uh, consequences of an animal flesh diet? Something people can grasp onto, like what would happen to their body, etc. Well, first of all, meat doesn't necessarily digest in the colon. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have a lot of uric acid uh -huh. as an animal. You're digesting, or you're trying to digest uh, blood vessels, mm -hmm. blood, uh, the organs. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the organ meats like chicken gizzards, uh, beef liver, things like that. These, these organs are, are are toxic organs because they're the detoxification centers in the animal. Okay. So when they when you take that on, you're taking on the toxicity that the animal had trapped within that organ. Right. Okay, that gets lodged in your tissues into your, and even into your DNA. Okay. Because your DNA has, has actually has spirituality behind it. Yeah. And it has and it has all of your, your traits encoded into right, it. Right, right, So right. that's going to mess with your DNA. Okay. 
Now, I should uh, give, uh, give a caveat here. If you look at uh, some of the people like the early European settlers, you look mm -hmm. at even the Native Americans, mm -hmm. you look at even ancient Africans who lived to be several hundred years yes, old, they sometimes incorporated meat into their diet, especially European settlers, and, I should say invaders into right, this country. Right, right. Uh, but they were not dying of these deep stage cancers like we're dying of. Why is that? That's because the animals were kept in their families for generations right. and they did not have any hormones added. Right. Uh, they did not eat any uh, grass that different was toxic. Different process, right? It's a completely different process. It was, it was a completely different growth process for the animals. So okay. um, when, when we in the present state in any colonialized or industrialized nation, uh, when we eat these, uh, these animals, uh, we end up getting these cancers. Right. Why? Because if you go to the slaughterhouse, you'll find that you know, all chicken always has tumors in it. When they cut the chicken open, it always has tumors in it. Many of the other animals like beef, lamb, those many, in many cases have tumors inside. Right. So you're eating the tumors because they don't always shave them off. You see? Okay. Um, now, what would you say to someone who's grown up, you know, eating meat? and growing up eating chicken like the normal, typical American diet. Mm. As far as making that transition, like we were talking earlier about where we were both at, because I know I was at a state myself where I, like meat was actually a primary <clears throat> part of my diet. And right. what was it like for you making that transition? And what would you say to people who were interested in this kind of thing but wasn't really sure about how to go about it? But you kind of had some, like, you know, maybe needed some motivation or some clarity about the actual process of switching from an animal-based diet to a plant or a fruit-based diet. Well, um, what I did, I can tell the people what I did. You know, I, when I went to work, I actually replaced my junk food with fruits and nuts. Mm -hmm. And when nuts technically are part of the fruit. Uh -huh. uh, and I found that I was lighter on my stomach right. and my mental and my spiritual clarity were even greater. Right. So I, I gave it a start there. I didn't just try to change everything right. wholesale. Right, overnight, right. And, and many people try, when they're going into a vegetarian diet, they think that everything has to happen at once. Once, they made that same mistake. But it was a process right. to brainwash you into living this way. Right. So it's a process to deprogram, right. right. then reprogram right. 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 into right. a proper lifestyle. So I would yeah. recommend that when people go to work, instead of packing, uh, or even going out to eat, for instance, going right. to McDonald's, going to Dunkin' Donuts. Instead, pack yourself a lunch full of uh, that salad in it. Right. Instead of using ranch dressing or something else with uh, with an animal substance, uh, try using uh, olive oil. If you have an olive right. press, press your own olives, you know, mm -hmm. and then add herbs to it. Right. Use it as a dressing. That's hot. That's okay. High. That that's very healthy. You can add, add a little zine to it by squeezing lemon juice over. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can put uh, try croutons. You know that's not an ideal, ideal food, but mm -hmm. to transition, you can try croutons. You can sprinkle herbs. You can try tomatoes mm -hmm. and the non-sweet fruits like cucumbers, mm -hmm. zucchini. Mm -hmm. You can put that in your salad. Right. Then add as much fruit and or nuts as possible into your entire day. In, into your entire day. So while you're at work for eight to ten hours, you're eating healthy automatically. Right. So you're not really thinking about it. Right. And then slowly get into it. You're still eating meat and other junk food. Uh, at the dinner table after work, well, you have to start somewhere, but you'll find eventually that you lose the lose taste. The desire, for it right? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So, to won't me. be forced. Yeah, um, a quick note when I first decided to.